In the last video, we covered a little bit about what a degree day is, some of the history, and by the end of it, we had come up with this equation for total annual heating energy use. We said it was related to the UA value of the building, and then we took this integral over the year of 65 minus the outdoor air temperature as a function of time only when this value is positive dt. And we found out that this integral here, the whole integral, this was the concept of the degree day. Let's do a short example of calculating the degree days for, uh, for three days of the year. So let's say January 1st, the average temperature outside was 60 degrees. January 2nd, it was 70. And on January 3rd, it was 63. Now I'm from Wisconsin, so actually this temperatures were in January. That would be fabulous. Maybe in Texas or Venezuela or something like this. So what is the degree day, again, we're, we're looking at taking this value with a, a delta t of one day. And we're taking this to be an average daily temperature. So let's go ahead and let's do this. For day one, we had an average daily temperature of 60. So let's 65 minus 60 when positive times one day plus we'll do this for the first three days 65 minus 70 one day I hope you see the pattern here and 65 minus 63 positive times one and just I don't ran out of room, but there's a day unit on there. So now we can go ahead. Let's let's evaluate these different things. So 65 minus 60 is positive five. This we're positive, so we keep the five, and we have five times. This is degrees F and degrees F. Forgot my units everywhere. Degrees F, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have five degrees F times one day here. Plus, we have a negative 5 in the parentheses, and this nomenclature, again, remember, if it's negative, this is going to 0. So we actually have 0 degrees F times 1 day. And this is very similar to the first one. We have a positive 2, 65 minus 63, when it's positive. So we have 2 degrees F times 1 day. So we have 5 degree days plus 0 degree days plus 2 degree days. That's going to end up giving you 7 total degree days. Now we did this for 3 days, but typically what you see values tabulated for is the sum of the degree days over the entire year. So that calculation is pretty straightforward. And what I'd like to show next in this video is that there's another form you may see this equation. Let's say you don't know the UA value of the building. You don't know the parameters, you don't know the area, but someone did give you the design heat flow. So at the worst conditions of the year, at the coldest day of the year, the 99th percent coldest temperature you would ever see at this location, what was the heat flow out of the building? A lot of times this may be known. So let's go down and just write out how that would be calculated, or a version of that. So we'll say design heat flow. This is design. Well that's, again, related to the UA value of the building. But now, the temperature difference we could use, we would say, 
that heat flow is related to the interior temperature minus that outdoor design temperature. And because we know this is very cold, we, we really don't need this. We'll know this is positive. But this is heat flow out of the building. We have a hotter inside and a very cold outside. So like I said, we say someone gave you this information and you can look this value up for the location and can assume this. This might just, for instance, be 75 degrees F or something like this. The indoor temperature set point. In winter time, maybe they set back, it's a little colder, maybe it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And in a cold place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you might have this be negative 5 degrees F in College Station, where I'm at now, you, this could be 32. Very rarely does it get down below freezing. But now, with all this information, we could we can just solve for UA. So, what is UA equal to? UA is that design heat flow divided by that temperature difference. So let's use this information for UA and let's plug it back into what we had up here. So instead of UA, we're going to have design heat flow over that temperature difference. So we have, go down here, use a new color, annual heating energy. That's related to the UA value. And we were multiplying that by the number of degree days. Now, there's one thing that's missing from this equation that might trip you up. And that's that we have to be careful about our units. So this here is an energy unit, we'll say BTU. And let's let's just draw some or write out the units we have here. So we have BTU per hour is a typical design heat heat flow. We have degree days, which really has units of degrees Fahrenheit days. And on the bottom we have degrees Fahrenheit. And we're trying to get to BTU. So this is this is this is nice. Well degrees Fahrenheit cancels. We have a BTU, but notice that we have an hour here and a days here. So this equation over here really is missing a factor of 24. So we really need 24 and that stands for 24 hours in one day. So day cancels day, hour cancels hour, and we're left with BTU. And so this is another form of the very simple degree day method formula for the total heating energy. Now if you want to know how much fuel that you might need, this is not taking into account uh, what type of equipment you had. That's just the requirement. If you want the amount of fuel, you'll just put the efficiency, say, of your boiler. And that would be the total amount of BTUs you need of fuel, raw input. And that's it. In the next videos, we're going to cover modifying this a little bit and talking about you should be questioning why why is why is 65 what what is what is this for can it be anything or why is 65 such a special number and we'll cover that in the next video. See you soon.